Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to plan a Milky Way astrophotography shot using the Photo Pills app. So astrophotography is something I've been wanting to do for a while now. I've not done a video on the channel about it, and to be honest I've not done very much at all, so it's been a goal for this year to go out and do some. In particular I want to get a Milky Way shot, and this video is not going to be about creating the shot, but it is going to be about planning it. And in particular, it's going to be about using the Photo Pills app to plan it. So this video is not sponsored by Photo Pills, and there are other tools out there that you can use. But I happen to have Photo Pills, and that's what I'm going to be using. There are going to be other tools that you need to use as well. I will touch on those, but it's mainly going to be about using the Photo Pills planner to plot your location and find out where the Milky Way is going to be at the right time and the optimal time to get a really good shot of the Milky Way. I'm going on holiday soon and hopefully uh, I'll be able to get a shot using that planning and you'll be able to see the results in a few weeks time. So before I get the Photo Pills app open, the first thing I need to do is choose a location. And I've done that based on a light pollution map. So there are various ones available on the internet and you go on there, you look at the map and you'll have different colors in different areas. And depending on that color, it will define how much light pollution there is. So obviously you want to look for an area with low light pollution, preferably a dark sky area. And then once you've chosen that, you can set that location in Photo Pills, which we'll have a look at now. So once you've got Photo Pills open, on the main menu, you'll see in the top left, you've got Planner. So that's what we're gonna look at first. I'm gonna tap on that. You see, I've already dropped my pin onto a location. So you can move that around, you just click and drag it around and you want to put that exactly in the spot where you're going to be taking your photo from and then if you don't know how to use this already what you would do is move the bottom bar around you can slide it left and right you see that the time's changing there and as you change that time you've got lines moving around on the screen so these will define things like the direction of the sun the moon but crucially, in our case, it's going to be the Milky Way. If you can't see the Milky Way data on there, you need to click or tap in the bottom right on the little icon that's got the two squares, like layers on top of each other. That'll open up this menu, and in here you can click on Milky Way. So what we've got here is a number of concentric circles around our pin. Then we've got a dotted line or a series of dots in an arc and we've got a thin white line in the middle and we've got a thicker line you can just see it there to the right of the thin line so the dotted arc is the milky way and you'll notice that the circles get bigger towards one end that's where the galactic core is and the thin line that we can see is the galactic center and the thick line is where the Milky Way is going to intersect with the horizon, so when it goes behind the horizon. And the concentric circles will define the height of the Milky Way, so the closer the dotted arc is to the center circle, the higher in the sky it will appear. So you can set a time in here, you can click at the bottom where the actual time is, you see it says 9.37pm there on the 3rd of September. If you just tap in there, that allows you to go in and choose a date and a time. You click OK in the top right. And like I said, you can slide that around left and right on the bottom to find out where the Milky Way is going to be at the time that you want to take your shot. Also at the top, underneath the word planner there, you can see we've got sun and moon. It tells you what time they're going to come up and go down. If I swipe to the right, you see we've got some information there about the moon. That's important because you don't want much light from the moon. So you can see here the phase is new moon. That's the ideal phase because it's almost no moon. So it's not going to be throwing out any light. You want to avoid a full moon, obviously, or any time that the moon is quite large and bright and full. If I swipe the other way and come across here, you see we've got information about the Milky Way. So when it's visible from and to, the azimuth and elevation. 
Okay, so there is another feature that I want to use for my planning. And for that, I need to pop out. So I've come out with Otis and what it is, is Night AR. So when you use this, if I just click on that, it gives you an overlay, an augmented reality overlay of where the Milky Way is going to be. So when I get to my location, I will probably go a bit earlier in the day, scouse out the area, and I will hold this up, find out where the Milky Way is going to be, and I can set the time that I'm going to take the shot, and then I'll know exactly where the Milky Way is going to be in my image when I actually take my shot. You can calibrate this by just clicking in the bottom left with visual calibration, and then you hold this up, find where the sun is, and you overlay the orange circle, which represents the sun, click confirm calibration, and hopefully that'll be a bit more accurate now. So that's gonna be really useful when I take my shot. There are just a couple of other tools that are useful in here for astrophotography, but mainly when you're actually doing the photography rather than planning it. So there's meteor showers, that'll tell you if there are any cool meteor showers. That is actually a planning tool, but I won't be using that. And star trails is good if you want to find out how long to set your exposure to get those nice star trails in the sky. For my shot, I don't want that because I want nice sharp stars and not any trails. And finally, there's spot stars. So this is actually to find out how long you should set your exposure for nice sharp stars. But again, I'll be using that when I take the shot rather than in the planning phase. So that's that. I'm going to head back home now. So next time you see me, I'll be back there and we'll finish up the video. So that's the main tools that I'm going to be using in photo pills to plan my shot. But you will also have to obviously plan for the weather as well. If it's really cloudy, you're not going to be able to see anything. I'll probably use the Cloudy Outside app. That lets me see the high, medium, low cloud on any particular day. And that's really useful. You can obviously use any weather website, TV, radio, anything that's going to give you information about the weather. Obviously, if it's really cloudy, you're not going to be able to see anything. But even if it's a little bit cloudy, it's not going to be the end of the world, hopefully, because you might have some long exposure clouds in the image, giving a little bit of detail and interest. And as long as they're not obscuring too much of the Milky Way, it might still be a good shot. So, like I said, I'm going on holiday. Uh, there won't be a video for the next two weeks, but hopefully when I get back, I'll have a video of the Milky Way shot and I'll be able to share all of the camera settings and gear that I've used to get that and hopefully it's a good image. But until then, that's about it for this one. So a huge thank you for watching. If you found it useful or you've liked the video in any way, please just give me a thumbs up down below. If you're a regular, massive thank you to you for watching. But if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button or over here on this little picture of me and that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's usually a video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time, but like I said, there won't be one for the next two weeks while I'm on holiday. But when I get back, I hope you'll join me for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.